Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. As we continue with our Praetor week, it's time for Jin Gitaxius in a reanimator deck. The Progress Tyrant is a 7 mana 5-5, five five, saying whenever we cast our first artifact, instant or sorcery, we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy, whereas if the opponent casts their first artifact, instant or sorcery, that will get countered. So an incredibly powerful card, especially if we can get it in play on turn 4, which we can do with Shieldred's Restoration. While we don't have Shieldred in this deck, she's here in spirit through her Restoration. A 4 mana sorcery that can also be kicked for 2 and a white, returning target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. Usually we have to pay 5 mana for these reanimation effects, so restoration does come with a significant drawback. We lose life equal to the reanimated creature's mana value, so in the case of Jin, that's minus 7 life, which is quite painful, especially when facing aggressive decks. But if we manage to kick restoration, which we can do thanks to the many treasure tokens in this deck, we gain life equal to its mana value instead, so that can also come up in the late game. Then the other creature we're trying to reanimate is of course Titan of Industry, which can stabilize us nicely by gaining 5 life, which can offset the life loss from restoration, make a 4-4 Rhino token is often one of the modes, or maybe blow up an artifact or enchantment or put a shield counter somewhere to protect against removal. And then our other reanimation effects include two copies of Edgar's Awakening, which is our typical 5 mana reanimation effect, but if we discard the Awakening it has a bit of upside, we can pay a black mana to return a creature from our graveyard to our hand. And then we also have two copies of Olivia, Crimson Bride, 6 mana, 3-4 with Flying and Haste, and when Olivia attacks we return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So now all of a sudden we bring back a Titan and smack the opponent for 10, as well as get all the benefits from bringing back a Titan, including potentially putting a shield counter on Olivia to protect her, because if we lose Olivia and no longer control a legendary vampire, then we have to exile all the cards we reanimated with Olivia, including the Titan. Titan, so we wouldn't be able to bring it back with a different reanimation effect, which is a pretty severe drawback as well. So make sure to protect Olivia at all costs. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, we have some early removal with two copies of a Voltage Surge, and again we have a few treasure tokens we can sacrifice to it to deal 4 damage at instant speed. There is the full set of Blood Tithe Harvester, which we can play early as a creature to maybe trade off, can activate it to maybe kill some smaller creatures, and it also makes a Blood Token when it enters, which we can sacrifice to maybe use as a discard outlet to discard our expensive creatures to reanimate on turn 4 or 5. And then a full set of Cathartic Pyre, which we can also use as a discard outlet, discard up to two cards and then draw that many, or we can deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker. Also pretty nice to copy with Jin once we have it in play to dig towards more action spells. And then at three mana, of course, the full set of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, the glue that holds all these decks together, and if you don't have a playset already, then what are you doing? This will make a Goblin Shaman token that helps us make more treasures, which can make it easier to cast our expensive spells if we're not on a reanimation plan. And then at the treasures, as I mentioned, also useful for maybe casting a Kicked Restoration, or even hard casting a Titan of Industry, if we make enough of them. And then eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki is also awesome, not only with the Blood Tithe Harvester, but also with a Titan of Industry, which is usually game over as soon as we start copying it. And then a full set of Maestro's Charm as well, which is a flexible removal spell that can deal 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker, so perfect for taking out the 5 toughness shieldred, but more often than not we're using this to look at the top 5 cards of our library to put one of those into our hand and the rest into our graveyard, so this can help us find a reanimation spell while potentially putting some expensive creatures in the graveyard, so this is perfect in a reanimation deck, and then also great to copy with Jin once we have it in play, and then the fact that these are all instants also has the advantage that we can maybe cast them during the opponent's turn, so we not only copy a spell in our turn with Jin, but we can do it again in the opponent's turn to get maximum value. And then finally two copies of Big Score as another discard outlet that will draw two and make two treasure tokens. So this is another great spell to set up maybe an early Olivia and to hardcast our various expensive creatures like Jin, which we can still do thanks to the blue mana in the deck. A little bit harder to hardcast Titan, but it is still possible, especially with a Big Score and another great card to copy with Jin. 
and then our mana base has four Xander's Lounge, lots of dual lands, and a couple basics, and then the channel lands with Soaring City, Abandoned Mire, and Crucible. Just need to make sure we have a good balance between lands that come into play untapped on turn two, so we can still cast our Harvester and Pyre on curve, and having enough mana fixing so we can still cast cards like Maestro's Charm on turn three. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and our hands could use a little bit of improvement, although we can improve it ourselves with Pyre, I suppose. Sure, we'll try it. Bone and blue-green, another Olivia, probably don't need both. So we'll discard and draw. And then Voltage Surge can go, since we haven't seen any early creatures. Okay, can cast a Maestro's Charm. Or I can Pyre Discarding Titan, since we're not casting it. If we do go for Maestro's Charm and find a 4-mana reanimation spell, I would still need an untapped land to actually cast it. So I don't think we're in a hurry there. Although with Pyre, I would only discard one, so it kind of feels like a waste. So maybe I do still Maestro's Charm and see what's up. Opponent with a Restoration. So we'll uh, go digging and there's the Restoration. Fable's also tempting. Can play that plus a Xander's Lounge. If I Restoration, bringing back Olivia is not that exciting. So yeah, maybe we'll grab Fable. And then the extra treasures will also make it easier to cast Olivia to then bring back Titan, which we can discard with a second chapter, hopefully. Although now Pyre discard double Titans also looking fine. Okay, opponent some sort of band mid-range deck. Could see some Planeswalkers, maybe. Double Titan can go. And there's Jin as well. So I can attack. Probably not interested in playing a second main Olivia. Even though we could, so we'll just play a tap land. And then next turn I could also hard cast a Jin if that's what I want. Although Olivia bringing back Titan looks good too. Opponents go to Storm the Festival, so we'll see what they hit. Double wedding announcement, not bad. Can make a couple 1-1s. One -ones. Do we need to Pyre? Probably better off saving it until after I put a Jin in play. And then for now... I think we play Olivia. And then can also attack with a Shaman if we deal with Architect. We'll blow up Architects and then put a shield counter on Olivia, perhaps, although it could still get exiled as a problem. Could put shield counter on Reflection. Yeah, I guess that's okay. So destroy plus shield counter, and so this destroys Architect. Shield counter on Reflection. And our opponent takes the trade. Okay, so if there's just a simple board wipe, we get to hang on to Reflection at least. Alright, farewell. That one hurts. Exiles everything, including graveyards. And uh, artifacts too. Ouch. So they wouldn't be able to cast Jin necessarily. At least they had to get rid of their Storm the Festival, but they still get to keep the wedding announcements. Alright, I guess now we can cast Jin. It's gonna be a long road to rebuild. But uh, copying Pyre next turn could provide a bit of value. Another restoration. Okay. So the game continues. No easy win here. Another restoration. Could be tricky for the opponent to answer Jin, but eventually they can go wide enough. 
So we'll start by casting Pyre. And I think I need to go digging as opposed to killing two tokens. And then we can still cast Restoration, bring back Titan. And then what modes do we choose? I don't think shield counter is all that relevant anymore. So make a Rhino blow up one of the announcements. And then I'll hang on to Abandoned Mire to maybe channel it. Okay. So now we've got a bit of a board presence, not under as much pressure. Jin hopefully protecting our team as well from another board wipe. And the opponent doesn't seem to have lots of cheap instants and sorceries. So if they're stuck with another farewell in hand, it's going to be difficult to actually resolve through Jin. Harvester's nice. So next turn I could maybe sacrifice the Harvester and then use Abandoned Mire so at the very least I get back Harvester. Not really in a position to attack. Opponent attacking with companions, since they probably have another wedding announcement. Could also be Iganjo, which is a reason not to block with Jin here. Right, just another restoration. No announcements, alright. Untap. Maestro's Charm is excellent. Let's go digging and copy with Jin. And that should find us more action. And yeah, opponent has seen enough now. Not sure which we prefer between Awakening and Pyre. Might be Pyre to draw more cards. But yeah, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No reanimation spell in hand yet, but uh, we can maybe find one with Fable and Big Score, so I'll keep it. And a turn to Harvester is nice too. Put on green-white. There's Olivia, so we can ramp into it using Big Score. And happy to play turn 3 Fable. Opponent making some 1-1s one here. So Bant's Broker's Ascendancy tokens. Alright, that's scary. For now, still playing Fable. And then I guess we keep Harvester back instead of sacrificing it. Although, hmm. Yeah, keeping the Harvester back discourages an attack next turn, but then the following turn... I wouldn't be able to kill the 3-3s three anymore, so I think I should still kill them. And then go for the token in case they have a way of bringing back reinforcements with a Sarah Paragon, for instance. Captain's Call. Yeah, it's a lot of 1-1s that are about to get pumped. And uh, I think I take two with a plan of attacking to make a treasure. And then Titan Engine can go. So I can attack, make a treasure, still big score, and then I'm taking 6, 7, 8, 9 next turn. But then Olivia getting back Titan can blow up the Ascendancy and that should stabilize us somewhat. Opponent luckily takes a trade, which I think is good for us. Also have the option of casting Maestro's Charm, since I don't need the extra treasure to cast Olivia. Opponent goes for wedding announcements. Yeah, killing the reinforcements, I guess, would be maybe the safest play overall. Opponent stays back with the 2-2s. 
Since they maybe wanted to get a token from the announcements instead of uh, drawing a card. That's fine. I think I still killed the reinforcements. And since we were going for Titan instead of Jin, at first I don't think we were interested in keeping spells to copy with Jin, although we can maybe big score after bringing back Jin with Olivia. So yeah, for now play Olivia. Attack, bring back Titan. And then we'll blow up the Ascendancy first. And then I can put a shield counter somewhere, and our opponent has seen enough. And then next turn would have been pretty insane, as we get to maybe bring back Jin with Olivia, copy our big score, and also have the combo of Reflection with our uh, Titan of Industry to maybe put a shield counter on Jin at instant speed. So lots of shenanigans to ensue, but our opponent packs it in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Turn 3 Fable always leads to good things. And then we just need to pick up a creature to reanimate on turn 4. Get these tapped lands out of the way, put in maybe a green-white enchantment deck. Or life gain. Okay, let us play Fable. Don't have anything obvious to discard, maybe Sheevan Reef. Can go. Opponent hangs back. And there's another Maestro's Charm. Probably don't have time to cast both. Could go for another Fable. Right, and then now Jin, we can discard to the other Fable. So we'll attack for two. Might even be able to play a Kicked Restoration to gain life instead of lose life. If I get to attack with my Shaman tokens again. Opponent will make some 1-1s one end of turn. Uh, let's see what's next. Maybe a King Darien to pump them. Or a Wedding Announcement. Okay. Discard Jin plus Shivan Reef. And there's a Titan as well. Okay, so can attack with my Shaman tokens. And then, yeah, why not kick a Restoration here? Bring back Jin, gain 7. Make it very difficult for the opponent to interact with our permanents. And then next turn I can copy Pyre to discard Titan. Or we can just cast it using the treasure tokens. And then having instance also means we can maybe copy a spell in the opponent's turn with Jin. Although Adlin might be worth taking out. We have some fun combos we can pull off with double reflection as well to make a, an army of two twos for one turn. So we have options. Attacking with the shamans is one option. And then just hard cast Titan, or copy Maestro's Charm, killing Adlin and Veteran, I guess. Feels a bit weak. Let's just go digging with Pyre, discard Titan, and maybe we'll find a reanimation spell. Can discard another Titan, and sure, Soaring City can go too. Okay, there's Olivia. Wouldn't be able to cast Olivia and attack with her. So maybe I'll pass for now. And then we can cast a double Maestro's Charm in the opponent's turn if we want. Or just copy a bunch of stuff with Reflection. Alright, Welcoming Vampire is a reason to double Maestro's Charm here. Killing Adlin and Vampire. And then end of turn... I guess copy the Shaman token. Okay, big score times two is also pretty exciting. Essentially pays for itself. 
Although I want to keep Olivia to actually cast. So, embarrassment of riches. Just bringing back Titan is probably good enough here. And then we can copy Titan with reflection several times as well. So that's going to be a massacre. I'll keep Jin untapped in case of Wandering Emperor. Alright, this should be fun. So, blow up artifact or enchantments. Might as well put a shield counter somewhere or make a rhino. Blow that up. And then we can still copy the Titan here with reflection at instant speed. So, I don't have to do it now. So, we'll pass. And if I do it end of turn, I'll be able to attack with the copies as well. Sarah Paragon doesn't have anything to get back right now. And her opponent does concede before we get a chance to copy Titan several times. But still, they stayed in the game longer than I would have expected. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Some early removal. Can Pyre to discard and draw, or... Just play turn 3 Fable, which is always powerful. All right, I'm probably going to have to Pyre here to hit my third land drop. Turn 2 Bankbuster is fine. So Titan and Jin can go. And there's our land. Alright, can uh, play the Swamp for now. But all four Sulphur Springs. It's gonna deal us a bit of damage here. So if our Shaman gets to attack, we can already Edgar's Awakening. Bring back maybe Titan to blow up Bankbuster. Or we can go for Jin, especially if we pick up a valuable spell to maybe copy. Double Spring can go. And there's Olivia. Alright, so we'll attack for two. Opponent trades. And we'll awakening. And yeah, it's a close call here. I think I go for Titan. And that will make a Rhino. And blow up artifact or enchantments. Titan is also going to be better if we get it going with Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Can use Vaulted Search to make sure they don't use the crowbar to blow it up. There's Adlin with no friends. Okay, so I don't think we should attack with Titan because it could get exiled by Wandering Emperor if we do that. So instead, just attack with a Rhino. And pass for now. Now they could equip Adlin with the crowbar, I suppose. And take out Reflection, and I don't have an artifact to sack to Voltage Surge. But I guess if that's their entire turn, we're not too upset. Our hand's a little bit awkward, but if Titan gets destroyed instead of exiled, at least Olivia can do some stuff. Opponent does indeed equip Adlin to take out the Reflection. Alright, so no copying Titan here, sadly. Alright, so we can play Olivia and attack here. And yeah, I guess with Jin coming back, we actually have lethal. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is quite good. Just need something big to reanimate. And Maestro's Charm. Pretty likely to put something in the graveyard. Can maybe discard one restoration to chapter two. Opponent mulching. Finding two lands, putting Invoke Justice and Titan in the graveyard. Alright, so we know what's up. Opponent also on the Titan reanimation plan. Don't really have a way to stop it.
So we'll see which deck manages to combo off sooner here. Turn 3 Restoration. And I'll discard Restoration plus Spring. And there's a Titan. Don't have a way to discard it right now. But I can attack with the Shaman. And then Maestro's Charm end of turn, perhaps. And next turn our opponent could already invoke just as back the Titan. So I'm hoping to reanimate a Jin here. No Jin to put in the graveyard. I'll grab another Fable. And then Restoration can bring back the second Titan now. And then I can put a shield counter on the reflection. So the opponent wouldn't be able to take it out with a Titan, blow up the restoration as well. That point's got the Wandering Emperor here to set up an ambush. I hope you're ready to That's acceptable. Uh, this can deal damage to planeswalkers as well. But we can let them keep Emperor for a turn. So, Restoration plus Play Harvester seems fine. As opposed to kicking it. So, Artifact or Enchantment plus Shield Counter. And I guess hope there's no Farewell in our future. That would be pretty effective too. Is that a reason to keep Harvester in hand? I guess I would be able to Maestro's Charm, but then whatever I put in the graveyard also gets exiled. Um, I guess I will pass for now. And then we'll reconsider. Depopulate, okay. At least doesn't kill the Reflection. And then... I'm just one treasure away from casting a Titan as well. I think I should still Maestro's Charm to find a reanimation spell, and then we can maybe still copy with Reflection next turn. And if nothing else, I can copy a Harvester, which is also quite effective. Alright, there's Jin, although no reanimation spell. Does that mean I put the Jin in hand, or... Can grab another harvester to go with reflection. Or I can grab a land so I can play harvester, play fable, and activate the reflection. Which is also valid. And we draw a gin anyways. So we'll use a Reflection now, since Emperor doesn't have the loyalty to minus two. And I guess just kill the Samurai, or I can attack the Emperor. Although they could just have another one. I'll just activate it now. And play Fable. And then now we're at a point where I'll probably keep Jin in hand, since I can almost hard cast it. Another depopulates, quite effective, but draws a card of Harvester at least. So next turn, discard Titan, and then Maestro's Charm would also be nice to copy with Jin. And I think I also discard Pyre just to give myself the chance of drawing an untapped land for Jin. It's a tapped Xander's Lounge instead. So I think I just play a tapped Lounge and pass. And keep all these instants until after I play Jin. And then Emperor doesn't really affect me too much since Jin doesn't have to attack to provide value. Emperor makes a token. And a Titan of Industry hardcast. 
That's gonna go after my Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And put a shield counter on itself, maybe. Okay, that's gonna be kind of tough to deal with, but uh, we have a little bit of life to work with. Keep land in hand to discard to big score, I think. And now we get to counter depopulate or another invoke justice, which the opponent hasn't cast yet. So take seven. Counter on Samurai. And step one, big score, discard Haunted Ridge. And draw a few cards. Another Maestro's Charms useful. And an Olivia. Okay, so do I go for Olivia here, bring back Titan, and then next turn I can maybe play a Kicked Restoration and copy it. So even if they have Wandering Emperor, it's not a disaster, as I'll still gain life of the Titan. So we'll gain life and make a Rhino just to give us the best board in case they have another Emperor to exile Olivia. Titan can go face. And yep, there's another Wandering Emperor. So that exiles Olivia, which also exiles the Titan. But we still have some goodies here to reanimate. Opponent actually exiling the Titan, I don't think that's the correct move. But uh, yeah, get to hopefully untap next turn and reanimate two creatures with Restoration. Harvester plus Titan, for instance. Exploration gets countered by Jin, so we could see another depopulate here just to wipe the board and leave Titan with a shield counter. Plus one counter on Samurai means that's probably not the case. So not sure what to think here. Um, I guess they could have another Wandering Emperor to put this up to 5 power. Otherwise I think it's reasonable to just block Titan, soak up some damage, and remove the shield counter. So, still not sure why they cast a joint exploration into Jin, and now our opponent concedes, just as we were able to play a kicked restoration, gain a bunch of life back, and take over. Sweet. Alright, so we get to see our reanimator deck in action, and yeah, can definitely do some powerful things as early as turn 4 now with the restoration, but it does come at a price, and if you're up against an aggressive deck, it's possible that the uh, damage you take off restoration, especially if you're not getting back a titan but instead a Jin, is enough for the opponent to just kill you on the following turn, so it does come with a few risks attached, and I wouldn't recommend this deck for ranked play, just because opposing aggro decks, which are popular in ranked, can easily kill you before you manage to do cool things, and then there's also lots of incidental graveyard hate, like a graveyard trespasser for instance, that can mess with your graveyard graveyard, and that's a card you're going to encounter quite often. So not the best deck for ranked, but a ton of fun if you just want to reanimate some titans and copy spells with Jin. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Stay tuned for more Praetor decks as we continue Praetor week. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.